from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, May the 19th, 2020. For the first time ever, a United Arab Emirates plane, direct from Abu Dhabi, landed in Israel tonight. The Etihad Airways flight made the special cargo plane trip to transfer humanitarian aid for the Palestinians to help them deal with the coronavirus crisis. It was coordinated with the Israeli government and the World Food Program. Israel and the UAE do not have formal diplomatic ties, and the plane did not bear the Etihad logo. The Associated Press reported that the state-owned carrier told them Etihad Airways operated a dedicated humanitarian cargo flight from Abu Dhabi to Tel Aviv on 19 May to provide medical supplies to the Palestinians. The flight, they noted, had no passengers on board. American biotech company Moderna shared some promising news about their experimental anti-COVID-19 vaccine that has been tested on a small number of volunteers. Moderna's chief medical officer, Dr. Tal Zaks, who is Israeli, told Israel's Channel 12 yesterday of the initial trials. We got the first results today, he said, and today we are showing that it actually works. We are able to stimulate the immune system. Zach said the Massachusetts-based company has been given the okay from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for the Phase 2 trial with 600 people, which should begin soon, and then for a Phase 3 testing trial on thousands of people in July. He said by about the end of the year, the start of next year, there is a reasonable likelihood that we'll see this vaccine on the market, at least on the American market. Israel's new diaspora affairs minister, Omer Yankalevich, shared her thoughts on how the coronavirus pandemic could be a chance to bring world Jewry closer together. Yankalevich, who is the country's first ultra-Orthodox female minister, said the coronavirus has created a new and complicated reality, noting Jewish communities and Jewish institutions around the world that have been hard hit. But with all of the difficulty, she said, this is also a great opportunity. It's an opportunity for the state of Israel to strengthen this invisible tie linking us together, to extend a shoulder, to express our commitment to Jews in the diaspora. This challenge must be an opportunity, she said, for change, for momentum, to create global Jewish connection and solidarity. Police in North Carolina are looking into an incident of vandalism at Elon University, a menorah that was knocked down in front of the Chabad Center at the Greensboro School. A local NBC affiliate shared surveillance video showing a driver getting out of his car in front of the Chabad Center and pulling the menorah down to the ground. Elon police said they are investigating the incident as a hate crime saying Elon is a close-knit community that is accepting of all faiths and religions. This cowardly act is unacceptable and does not represent the Elon community or our community values. The Chabad Center's director, Rabbi Mendy Minkowitz, wrote on Facebook that hundreds of people have reached out to show their support for the community in the wake of the incident through emails and text messages and donations to help fix the damage, which is estimated to cost around $3,000. Jewish organizations welcomed news today by a region of Spain reversing its decision to sponsor an anti-Israel organization teaching a seminar against racism. Valencia had hired BDS País Valencia, which is a local boycott, divestment, and sanctions group, to lead a 20-day training seminar next month entitled Solidarity and Human Rights, Learning to Teach Against Hatred and Racism, with the seminar claiming to be against discrimination of all religious groups. But BDS País Valencia has been known for its anti-Israel position, and many Jewish organizations had made their strong opposition known and today commended the reversal, including B'nai B'rith International, who welcomed the action taken by the local government.
The Israel Antiquities Authority and the Western Wall Heritage Foundation unveiled a discovery today of an approximately 2,000-year-old underground complex in Jerusalem's Old City. Co-directors of the authority, Dr. Barak Monikandam Givon and Tehila Sadiel, said in a press release today, this is the first time a subterranean system has been uncovered adjacent to the Western Wall, pointing out that the structure has many hand-cut and chiseled niches. The question they asked, why were such efforts and resources invested in hewing rooms underground in the hard bedrock? We're asking ourselves, what was the function of this very complex rock-cut system? Did it use for people to live here? Or did people store here food or groceries to an upper building that did not survive? Another possibility is that this system was used for hiding during the siege on Jerusalem 2,000 years ago when the Roman legions conquered the city. The new find was announced just ahead of Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day, which marks the reunification of the capital. Yom Yerushalayim begins Thursday into Friday. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, May the 19th. At 7 o'clock, Assistant Professor of Political Science Beth Ginsburg talks about the history of Jewish political participation in the U.S. and other world governments. At 8, former U.S. Secretary of State and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger discusses the lessons learned from his encounters with Richard Nixon, Golda Meir, and Anwar Sadat from the 2019 Jewish Leadership Conference on Jews and Conservatism. At 9, it's part two of Mark Golub's interview with former National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Abe Foxman. At 10 o'clock, David Makovsky and Dennis Roth talk about Israel and the Trump peace plan. And coming up right after this newscast, it's Election Arena. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, May the 19th, 2020. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.